Welcome back or welcome to Amazing Black History. Matthew Alexander Henson was an American explorer who accompanied Robert Perry on seven trips to the Arctic over a 23-year period. He is best known for his participation in the 1908 through 1909 expedition that claimed to have reached the geographic North Pole on April 6, 1909, in which Henson believed he was the first of their party to reach the North Pole. Matthew Henson was born in Maryland just after the Civil War. Sadly, both of Henson's parents died when he was a boy, and he was subsequently sent to live with an uncle in Washington, D.C. The uncle paid for a few years of education for Matthew, but sadly, his uncle also eventually died. At the age of 11 or 12, Henson walked at the very least 41 miles from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore, Maryland, which was a busy seaport. Can you imagine being on your own at the age of 11? That's just completely unthinkable for me. Type in the comment box below, Matthew was brave. Henson traveled by foot to Baltimore, where he hoped to get work on his ship. He succeeded and became a cabin boy on the merchant ship Katie Hines. He traveled the world, China, Europe, and North Africa, and he learned how to read and write courtesy of the ship's captain, who saw that the young boy was smart and keen to learn. After six years of sailing the ocean, Henson's captain also died. Wow. This poor kid lost all of his parental figures. Devastated by the death of the man who had done so much for him, Henson returned to Washington and took a job as a store clerk in a furrier's shop. It was at the furrier shop that Henson met Navy Lieutenant Robert Edwin Perry. Perry was selling some pelts and took a liking to Henson as they reviewed and compared their various adventures. Perry gave Henson a job as his assistant on a survey trip of Nicaragua. Henson, missing the adventure of traveling, quickly became a permanent member of Perry's crew. Through the 1890s, Perry and his team would return to Greenland several times. They battled extreme weather, loss of teammates, and starvation. On one journey, they were forced to eat the dogs pulling their sleds. Perry grew to count on Henson, whose carpentry, mechanical, and dog driving skills were unmatched. By 1900, Perry had become determined to reach the North Pole. Perry, with Henson at his side, would make several attempts to reach the North Pole, each one unsuccessful due to the brutal and deadly conditions. In 1908, they made one final try. Since time wasn't exactly on their side, you see, Perry was 50 years old and Henson was 40. Past attempts had been restricted by difficult communication with the native Eskimos. Henson, in turn, learned their language. By gaining the Eskimos' trust, Henson paved the way for the success of the expedition, as did a special ice-cutting boat built especially for the expedition. As a result, it was Henson that arrived closest to the pole in advance of Perry. However, it was Perry that trudged the last few miles to plant the American flag. Perry seemed to resent Henson for arriving ahead of him, and their relationship became strained and was never quite the same afterward. Although Henson had technically got there first, Perry was celebrated upon returning to America. As you can imagine, Henson did not receive the same attention and he lost his job with Perry. He ended up parking cars in New York, the only work that he could find. As a side note, American physician and explorer Dr. Frederick Albert Cook also claimed to have reached the North Pole on April 21, 1908, nearly one year before Robert Perry and company. Both Cook and Perry's accounts have been disputed ever since. Now let's get back to Henson. Things seemed to turn in Henson's favor when he received a presidential civil service appointment, which gave him a more comfortable living. I'm currently unaware as to what his actual job was, though. However, Henson spent most of the next 30 years working on the staff in the U.S. Customs House in New York. In 1912, Henson published a memoir about his Arctic explorations entitled A Negro Explorer at the North Pole. Within the autobiography, he describes himself as a general assistant, skilled craftsman, interpreter, and laborer. In concert with author Bradley Robinson, Henson produced a 1947 biography, Dark Companion, which went into more detail about his life. He received a Congressional Medal in 1944 and a Presidential Citation in 1950. In 1944, Congress awarded Henson and five other Perry aides duplicates of the Perry Polar Expedition Medal, a silver medal given to Perry. Henson died in the Bronx on March 9, 1955 at the age of 88. 
In 1908, accompanied by a commemoration ceremony, both the bodies of Henson and his wife were moved for reinterment at Arlington National Cemetery. Matthew Henson's story is one of resilience, perseverance, and an unwillingness to have his accomplishments muted. If you are still here, comment below, I will persevere like Matthew. Subscribe, like, and share. This has been another installment of Amazing Black History. Have a great day or night.